Hello guys, my name is Sorin and today I want to show you how to build a simple mini UPS for your modem or router. The first thing that we need for a UPS is a battery pack, or in my case only two lithium ion cells, because I want it to be small and I don't need a very large capacity. I will salvage them from this laptop battery. And this battery pack has only 0.22 volts. Well, these cells are dead, I cannot use them. You can see that they are corroded, in fact it's very dangerous to use them. They should go directly to the recycle center. But don't worry, I have a lot of used laptop batteries. Yes, much better now. The voltage is good, but they still need to be tested. So, I will unsolder all the wires and cut the nickel strips. Remember to always wear protective goggles and make a smug face when cutting plastic or metal. When you cut the nickel strips from used cells, I suggest you start with the negative side. Because if you're not careful with the pliers on the positive side, you can very easily short the positive terminal to the cell housing, which is the negative terminal. But now you can separate the cells without any danger. These 18650 cells are ok, considering that they haven't been used for several months, probably more than a year, but I still need to test them. If you don't have a spot welding machine, you can leave a piece of the nickel strip attached to the cell terminals, so you can easily solder some wires later. I will give them 3 cycles of charging and discharging with 500 milliamps and check if the cells get hot. These Samsung 18650 cells have an original nominal capacity of 2200 milliamp hours, but they probably have a lower capacity now. You can find some information about the lithium ion cells from the laptop battery label. The 4400 mAh capacity is too large for a single cell, so there must be two cells in parallel. And 10.8 volts divided by 3.6, which is the nominal voltage of one cell, equals three pairs of cells connected in series. So this battery pack has a total of six lithium ion cells, each having a capacity of 2200 mAh. After 3 cycles the cells did not get hot, so now I can finally test their capacity. I will use these two cells with around 1790 mAh. You can see that the capacity has decreased over time, but these are good brand cells, they are still usable. These are the rest of the components I need. The cells will be connected to this 2S BMS board, which has all the needed protections including balancing feature. The battery voltage will be increased to 12 volts with this step-up converter. It will work continuously, so I have added a small heatsink to the IC, just in case. I want this 12 volts UPS to be as small as possible, so I need to fit all the components in this small plastic case. The original charger will be replaced with this 8.4 volts and 2 amps charger. The BMS board needs this voltage to charge the cells. I'll cut these unneeded plastic brackets, or whatever you call them, to gain more room inside this small box. The side panel will also be cut to fit a small switch and a charging connector. Two wires will be soldered to the connector, then I will glue the components on this side, except the switch. The connector terminals will be insulated with hot glue. Let's get back to the lithium ion cells. I sanded the nickel strips for a better and faster soldering. This paper tape is for extra protection. I don't want to accidentally melt the plastic insulation and short the cell when I solder the wires. Even though I solder the wires to the nickel strips and not heat up the cell directly, I still need to move very fast. I will add another piece of insulating tape between the cells to eliminate any risk of a short circuit. This is the best position or probably the only position for the cells inside the case. Let's increase the protection even more with a fuse for each cell. If there is a problem with the BMS board or any wire or soldering joint and one or both cells get shorted, the fuses will prevent them from catching fire. I'll insulate the fuses and wires with shrinking tubes. For this project I will use 1.5 amps fuses because my router needs only a few hundred milliamps, but if you build a UPS for a bigger load you need fuses with a higher current rating. 
Of course, all the battery terminals will be insulated. The battery pack will be fixed to the plastic case with a small amount of hot glue. I'll also add some hot glue in the back of the charging connector. For monitoring the battery level, I will use this digital voltmeter, because it's more precise and smaller than a standard battery level indicator. The charging voltage is 8.6 volts, which is a bit higher than the rated 8.4 volts. That's okay because the BMS board needs between 8.4 and 9 volts. But now we see another problem. This LED display is not very visible in daylight. To improve this, I will cover it with a piece from a semi-transparent plastic folder. You can see that it's much more visible with this plastic cover. I'll glue the cover with two parts adhesive, which is also semi-transparent. It will take a few minutes for the glue to dry. In the meantime, I will mark the hole, using another voltmeter of course, and use a Dremel to cut it. I'll use a cutter to smooth out the edges and make the voltmeter fit. The voltmeter will be fixed to the plastic panel with hot glue. I'll also add some hot glue on the voltmeter soldering joints because these wires are very fragile and may break while I manhandle the components. The BMS board will be positioned on the lithium-ion cells with double-sided foam tape. The foam tape will also act as a thermal insulator if the board warms up while charging the battery. This yellow wire comes from the center battery terminal. The BMS board needs this balancing lead to monitor the voltage of each cell so it can activate all the protection features. For example, the balancing function which is very important. When one of the lithium-ion cells charges to around 4.2 volts, a transistor is activated and discharges the cell through this resistor. So it will keep it at 4.2 volts until the other cell gets charged up to the same level. You can determine the balancing current from these resistors. This BMS board has 62 ohms balancing resistors. So according to Ohm's law, 4.2 volts divided by 62 ohms equals a balancing current of 67 milliamps. Let's check for example this 3S BMS board with its 43 ohms resistors. It has a balancing current of 97 milliamps, so it can balance a battery pack with a larger capacity. Let's get back to the mini UPS. I will insulate the switch connectors with shrinking tubes. The switch will be connected between the BMS board and the step-up converter. The schematic of the mini UPS is actually very simple. You can also find it in the video description. The input and output of the BMS board are actually the same terminals. Pretty simple, right? The output connector will come out from the side of the UPS. Before soldering the wires, I need to check the connector polarity. Obviously, it must have the same polarity as the original charger, otherwise it will damage the router. I will solder the sensor wire to the BMS board positive terminal. Let's see if it turns on. No suspense here. This capacitor will be soldered to the UPS output, so it will keep the voltage a bit more stable when I connect the load. Usually, I use 1000 microfarads or more. But this 470 microfarads capacitor is the only one I can fit inside the UPS. And finally I can set the output voltage, 12.1 volts. There may be a small voltage drop. I will tighten the UPS box with the 4 screws it came with. The switch needs to be pushed in its place. With all the testing, the battery got a bit low on voltage, so let's charge it. After one hour of charging, I test the temperature with my precision sensor. The UPS is slightly warm and the charger is between warm and hot. Now that's a precise measurement for you. The charging is finished after another half hour. You can see the charger red LED turns green because there is just a very small load now or no load at all on the charger. The voltmeter is showing 8.6 volts now, but this is the charger voltage. The battery remained at 8.4 volts. Let's test it with a 1 amp load. I've improvised some resistors and a light bulb for this test. The UPS voltmeter is showing the battery pack voltage, and this DIY voltmeter and ammeter measures the output voltage and current consumption. I would say that the voltage is pretty stable at 1 amp. I'll end this test because the 1.5 amps fuses are near their limit now. I don't want them to burn. Let's test the real capacity of this UPS with a 500 milliamps load. 
which is much more than my router needs. This homemade voltmeter slash ammeter is pretty useful with its alligator clips. I've uploaded the build video on my Patreon page, so check it out when you have the time. The BMS board over discharge protection disconnects the battery when the first cell goes down to around 2.9 volts, so it should turn off right about now. Let's round it up to one and a half hours. If we calculate the capacity and energy of the battery pack and compare it to the UPS output, we have an efficiency of 70%, which is not bad considering that when the battery is almost discharged, the step-up converter needs to increase the voltage from 6 to 12 volts. The efficiency also depends on the load. The higher the current draw, the lower the efficiency is. This is actually an optical network terminal, which also has a wireless router function. This is the fiber optic cable coming from a passive optical network, so if there is a power outage in my area, the ONT still receives the optical signal. It just needs power to work. First I will check the power consumption. The voltage dropped to 11.8 volts with a current consumption of less than 300 milliamps. So my UPS is actually much more powerful and stable than the original charger. And now let's connect my contraption and test it. Well it works, the router LED started blinking. And now it's time to turn up the power and test my mini UPS. Yes, I should have just unplugged the charger. But hey, it's more dramatic this way. You can see it's working pretty well. The voltage remains stable at 12 volts all the time. The charger LED is still on because it's using power from the UPS. And with a current consumption of 260 milliamps, this battery will last for 6 hours or even more because the step-up converter efficiency is better with a lower current consumption. This is more than enough for me, but if you need a higher output current or a bigger autonomy, just use better or more lithium-ion cells in parallel and you will increase the battery capacity. So this is my simple 12 volts mini UPS which is very useful for your wireless router, ONT, modem or even landline phone which is still used these days especially by the elderly for emergencies. If you enjoyed this video hit the like button, share and subscribe and check out my Patreon page. Bye!